Welcome. Hey everyone, uh, we're here at the end of Neural Match. We are the project team from Part 34, Armored Newt with Lasers. And I'm Leandro Schultz. Or I'm a PhD student at the Queensland Brain Institute at the University of Queensland in Australia. Hello everyone, my name is Hyo Jin Bei. I'm a PhD student in Gachon University, which is located in South Korea. Hi everyone, my name is Mary Ardron. I'm a PhD student at the Australian National University in Canberra, Australia. Hi everyone, I'm Stan Tao. I'm a postdoc from University of Southern California. And also, I'm a member of Armored Nudes with Lasers. We are interested in the relationship between vision and action. We know that the visual system can dynamically interact with the motor system. It might be actively engaging in the motor plan or simultaneously receiving information from the motor system. So, we ask, how do neurons in the visual cortex represent features of spontaneous behaviors. Specifically, does the visual cortex encode features of spontaneous behaviors? Number two, how selective are neurons to the behavioral features? And how selective are the behavioral features to neurons? Number three, if so, do presentations of different behaviors require distinct patterns of co-variation across neurons? Our data set was consist of calcium transient of 11,000 neurons in the visual cortex of the mouse and measurement of spontaneous behaviors. And basically, we try to investigate the relationship between these behavior variables and neural activities from a different perspectives. First of all, we have some data exploration steps in order to see whether all recorded neurons encode a behavior variable or only some of them involved, we explored correlations between individual neurons and its behavior variables. And based on this, we performed supervised clustering. And additionally, we explored the dimensionality of the data because it is well known that the intrinsic dimensionality is far less than the actual number of recorded neurons because of their correlations. We also introduced the effective dimensionality, which is entropy-based estimator to provide more precise descriptions and how much extent data can actually span the latent manifold. And personally, I sometimes feel stressed due to the constrained time, but this team project experience informed me the power and pressure of collaborating with people with different backgrounds. I was so happy during the anime period, and I would like to thank to my team members and pod members T.A. Lucas and our mentor Silicon as well. Hello everyone, uh, Leandro here. So after Hyojin presented the exploratory step of our analysis, I'm going to go over the more detailed analysis that we did. In the first instance, we tried to use GLMs without any time window uh, to help us uh, better understand how neurons encoded the behavioral data. And we particularly use some of those highly correlated clusters that we found in the exploratory step and saw how selective or not they were to, to the behaviors. On the other side, on the decoding part, uh, we used a, a different technique, a nonlinear one, uh, to help us you know, learn, learn a little bit more. And then we used the same uh, highly correlated clusters uh, that were highly correlated to one of the behavior variables and, and observed if they were able to, to predict the behavior. And finally, we tried to investigate more the concept of neural modes and the dimensionality of the data by both computing um, a linear and a nonlinear method. Uh, the first supervised PCA, we tried to compare the similarity, be similarity between the eigenvectors obtained and secondly, in the non-linear option, uh, we used multi-layer perceptron model and compared the similarity between the weight matrices that we've got from, from the model. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mary and I'll be continuing this presentation just to give you an idea about how we run the group project and what our experience was during this time. So I think the biggest challenge for us really was time. Uh, we had some really interesting ideas about what we wanted to implement. 
uh, but as we started to explore the data, then there were even more ideas that we that we just kept piling up. So really, our issue was uh, not having enough time, not being able to decide which analysis to do, what was the right approach. But I think, um, on the other hand, what we really loved about this project was working together as a group. I think uh, we were really lucky, and I think that we all felt that it was a really great environment, particularly because we all came from very different backgrounds. Um, so we all brought something new to the table and we could all learn from each other. And I think that that was what was so great about the group project and about the course in general. So thank you. Um, and yeah, here's a link to our notebook, so feel free to check it out.